What's going on my people? Welcome back to the Live Capital YouTube channel where life is for the taking. It's the host himself, Ted Talk Money, coming back at you to tell you something. This time we're going to be focusing on XRP. Yeah, that's right. That's the number one ISO crypto over here on this side. As you guys could see, at the time of this recording, you have your XRP right here at 46 cents. Guys, it's a great thing. As you already know, we're all looking forward to all-time highs for our XRP. We're going to be going over the Q3 2020 22 XRP report officially from Ripple, guys. It's going to be a great one. I have some real time news for you guys, and we're going to be talking about the UK Prime Minister. All right, so I have a great show lined up for you. But I want to go ahead and bring some attention right here to Solo Genic, guys. You already know what it is. So we're going to be giving you guys a bit of a, a deep dive and a background for it. Solo Genic in itself, it's already being watched by 3.6 million people on 3.6 million watch lists. So people are really looking forward to see where this whole thing is going to be going an xrpl project so if you have any xrp of course you might have been airdropped some solo look forward to our update on that next up right here i'm sure you guys already know elon musk has bought twitter so you see it here elon musk has fired v jaha Gade, the head of legal policy, trust, and safety, who made the decision to permanently suspend Donald Trump. You see right here, just in multiple country or companies to reportedly halt ad spending on Twitter if Elon reinstates former President Donald Trump's account. Interesting, right? Next right here, you have Janet Yellen says, I don't see any signs of a recession in this economy at this point, she Bruh. says. <laughs> Treasury uh, Secretary cited low unemployment as being a key factor in the country's economic well-being during a recent interview, y'all. Come on now. As you can see, prices are going up. Gas prices are going up. Energy prices are going up. We all can see it. Does this woman need a seeing eye dog? Next up right here, guys, uh, some interesting information right there. As y'all can see, uh, D-Boost, big shout out to you, D-Boost. You uh, went on ahead and he got the uh, one of one exclusive Lyft JoJo that was out there. Of course, guys, we're going to be uh, on the lookout to show you guys more and more that's happening with the Serious JoJo team. So look out for more developments with that. Looking good. All right, next up right here. I thought this uh, this article was really interesting because it's, it's more so confirmation about everything that we talk about, about institutional demand. So if you are new to our channel, the reason why people are really into the ISO community is because really we're looking forward to the institutional demand that will really come for this DLT after regulations, after uh, ISO um, adoption, when you actually have full scale crypto adoption. So what you guys are seeing here is a majority of institutional investors are buying crypto because of its high potential upside. So to give you guys a little bit of a background right here, you guys could see it coming out from CNBC. They took this poll and you can see 43 percent of those that were a part of this poll said high potential upside is the reason why they're investing in crypto. You have innovation, uh, decentralization, free from government intervention, but they see the upside in crypto. All right. Keeping that in mind, you have 48 percent of high net worth investors are a part of that global crypto, um, that crypto adoption, while 10 percent is actually traditional hedge funds. So I say that to say that we're going to be going into the uh, age of the individual investor. OK, really, really, that's where we're going. Uh, next up, I have to show you guys, of course, a awesome exchange that we're always going to be recommending to you guys. The, the folks over at Fairdesk has really given our people a welcome, a welcome bonus, guys. But the reason why we show you guys uh, Fairdesk is because they're about security, performance, reliability and support all the way around. Now, as you guys can see here, these bonuses that they're offering guys it's great you have a welcome bonus right here you just complete your kyc you'll receive a two dollar bonus that bonus can be used to offset uh trading fees you can use that of course to for profit any way around but this is what we love right here this deposit bonus what they'll pretty much do is uh match you on your deposit up to six hundred dollars all you have to do make a first deposit of a hundred dollars or any cryptocurrency equivalent and then from there they'll match you up to 600 usdt also you guys are going to be receiving a 
trading bonus of about $15. Again, that trading bonus can be used to offset fees. You can use that if you uh, profit in a trade and whatnot. Uh, let you guys know, of course, we're talking about a market that's really growing right here. You can see it, $9.3 billion in trading volume. Cardano seems to be the most popular trading pair. And of course, guys, they are backed. They have full-on licenses in the US and Canada. So you guys can see that they are able to trade XRP. So it's a good thing. All right, next up for uh, Uphold. They were putting it out there, as you guys can see, XRP, XDC. Now, the newest news from Uphold is that XDC has been upgraded to their tier three, or more so, you're able to withdraw and deposit your XDC onto your decent wallet. So it's really good, guys. Of course, you already know what it is. There's a link in our description for a decent wallet, guys. If you've been wondering where to store your XDC, I've been buying all my XDC. It's still on the exchanges. Where can I go to get it off? Where can I withdraw it? There's a link in the description for a decent wallet save yourself some money especially if if you've been wanting to get your xrp your xlm your xdc off of the exchanges use our link and save some money all right so right here you have uk prime minister rishi sunak nft project is still on track despite the market meltdown now before i get into this if you don't mind please smashing that like button now there's a lot of news that's coming out about this new uk prime minister it seems that he Truce, Liz Truce, and as well, uh, Boris Johnson were all part of this as they come in three pack, if you will. You might be wondering or thinking about how Liz Truce came, and I believe she was the only um, prime minister for about 40 days or something like that. And then, you know, I mean, complete collapse. The sterling completely tumbles, and then you have this guy coming in uh, behind. So, I want you guys to know that back when he was chancellor, he was speaking to the Royal Mint UK to create a NFT for Britain. Long story short, I want to let you guys know it's not exactly shelved. They still continue to um, bring on <clears throat> more developments for it. So the Bank of England, though, has said that it is still looking at whether we should create a CBDC for the future of the UK. So long story short, if you guys don't know the new uk prime minister he's actually crypto forward and he's all about a cbdc for the uk all right next up coming in from mixin network we're thrilled to announce our strategic integration with the xdc network becoming closer because xdc is now uh on mixin mixin guys right here so you can see it uh with a frontier wallet ledger wallet all of them they're saying that you actually have these uh, this support here just more and more um xdc network integration guys so if you want to get involved and find out a little bit more about uh mixing go ahead and give them a follow over on twitter <clears throat> now this article i thought was really funny i don't really want to touch too far into it but it's just interesting the misinformation that's out there and how they can use each of these heads truly to really change your mind about certain situations so three reasons why gold loses to crypto according to ethereum's co-founder really quickly to show you guys this he says gold is incredibly inconvenient it's difficult to use particularly when transacting with untrusted parties it doesn't support safe storage options like multi-sig and at this point gold has less adoption than crypto so crypto is the better bet letting you guys know something right now what they're working on behind the scenes is really boosting the value of natural resources that's the thing gold silver palladium iridium all of them they're natural resources it's god's it's god's money okay currency paper fiat that's nothing yet we all trust it what we need to really trust is natural resources and commodities that that's the real precious value so what i'm showing you guys is this right here and we've covered it uh in detail in one of our in one of our releases please look through our library but about this technology the iota origin what the iota origin iota technology is doing is um, allowing for supply chain management this is what i want you guys to see when it comes down to gold its value is going to be boost that demand is going to be boosted up 500 percent that's really the whole goal of this whole thing you got the paris agreement paris climate accords but you guys can see right here the world bank um Forecast a demand of raw commodities to increase by 500 percent by 20, 2050. OK, so again, where we're going, consequently, energy transition closely related to resource transition. You see that. So right now we're moving away from um, blood, sweat, gear, legacy system, you know, debt, slavery system to now energy um, aware. Now we're, you know, energy, energy. Um, inclusive you get what i mean so so that's what you're having here so we're going to be seeing more your gold's going to increase in value silver will and all of them and of course guys you already know what it is with iso cryptos and natural commodities you know it's a point there 
all right getting to our main piece here my people if you guys don't mind please hitting that like button now going over this in brief i'll leave you guys a link for it and we just might go over this a little bit more in our live today uh, but right here, the Q3 2022 XRP market report. This is great. Now, a few things that I, I that kind of stuck out to me is this: Ripple Ripple's XRP holdings are now below 50% of the total outstanding supply for the first time. All right. So a lot of people obviously have been saying that, well, XRP is completely controlled by Ripple. Ripple XRP is basically the same thing. It's just a centralized coin. Well, as you guys can see here, according to Ripple's various wallets, the amount of XRP held for the first time is below 50 billion or 50 percent of the total outstanding supply. Critics have pointed to the company's XRP ownership as an indicator that the XRPL is controlled by Ripple. This is not true, period. The XRPL uses uh, federated Byzantine consensus to validate transactions, add new features and secure the network, which means that each validator node gets one vote regard regardless of how much XRP they own. Ripple operates four out of the 130 plus validator nodes on the XRPL. And so people really have to realize that Ripple, what they're doing, their solution for the world, it's there. Okay, liquidity crisis, uh, ODL, it's already solving a solution. But XRP, the solution to that solution or the security, what's going to secure that solution, that already in itself is open source technology. Okay. So you guys can see that it's really about the mechanism and how it's going to be held, how they can control the solution. And Ripple is that. So they're saying here in Q3, the macroeconomic environment continued to experience considerable volatility in response to geopolitical and economic events, ranging from further escalation in the Russia-Ukraine war to declining economic health in the Eurozone and the UK. Right. So everyone is seeing a global recession everywhere. In addition, a persistent, strong U.S. labor market and a stubborn head headline inflation prompted what some perceive as a hard line stance towards bringing down inflation in the US. Pretty much this whole crypto market summary, putting it all out there. While equities continued to sell off, crypto companies maintained hiring freezes and conducted layoffs. Just putting this whole market report out for everybody. But let's get to the main piece here. This is what we really want to show you guys. Global regulation. All right. So I want you guys to see here about what the SEC was putting out. And you guys already know it, but this is coming out from Ripple themselves. What they want to say is that the SEC continued its game of regulation by enforcement while still not providing any clarity to the crypto industry. Despite many clamoring for the thoughtful policy making SEC chair Gary Gensler repeatedly claimed that crypto regulations have been clear for years and the industry does not need any specific rulemaking for projects issuing tokens. In addition, he remarked that multiple federal agencies overseeing securities could undermine market regulation, which only underscores there is a lack of alignment on how to regulate crypto. You guys see that? Man, the Digital Commodity Exchange Act, the DCEA, which was introduced earlier this year, seeks to designate the CFTC as a federal agency charged with rulemaking and enforcement of reporting requirements for digital commodities, similar to current requirements in commodity derivatives markets. How Congress choose to deal with this issue will remain a core area of activity throughout the rest of this year and likely into 2023. So let's let's look at that for a second, my people. As you guys know, the SEC right now they're in the midst of this whole thing but they've but the ripple legal team recently got a bunch of henman email documents why that's so important is to really expose the corruption in the sec personally speaking over here on this side if the henman emails were to be released if they were to actually show the smoking gun in this whole thing in this whole sec ripple lawsuit then we can actually see a whole culmination and coming together of crypto regulation crypto clarity and ISO adoption happening at the same time. Okay, Congress really understanding how to deal with regulation for digital assets, Ripple getting clear, uh, ISO adoption for the UK and the US, it all would happen at the same time. 
The industry applauded the EU's lawmakers as they finalized the markets in the Crypto Asset Regulation, that's the MICA, which establishes a single set of rules across Europe for crypto regulation. Y'all, that's what we've talked about. If you are new to our channel, that's what we've talked about. This MICA, this framework, is going to be copied all the way around. Right now on the world stage, the US is just diddling their fingers. They're just, just playing with their thumbs. You know, what's going to happen? Where's the digital dollar? Where's the actual move to Towards a real-time growth settlement, and that's really where whole Fed now, uh, the Fed now, Fed wire introduction is supposed to come. But this framework, this regulation, is going to be about for everyone. In the UK, the new economic uh, security secretary of Treasury stated that the UK government will press forward with its plans to become an international hub of crypto for crypto, despite the recent leadership changes. Okay, and then they talk about uh, Do Kwon, South Korea, and Interpol. Uh, give me guys a little bit of a background, the XRPL and the NFT space. As you guys know, Ball Main uh, reached out over to Ripple, of course, for their uh, NFT creation, which is great. Also, guys, if you want to know a little bit more about XLS20, that's going to be the new uh, NFT standard, uh, bringing advanced features like automatic royalties, co-ownership of assets, and more without the need for smart contracts. That's going to be awesome, guys. It's really great. A lot of the stuff that's going to be coming to the XRPL. So, guys, I don't really want to hold you up too much. Let's look right here about XRPL interoperability, though. So, the XRPL interchain operability expanded into Q3 as Poly Network integrated XRPL into its cross-chain bridging system. This is the third large-scale bridge to add XRPL after multi-chain, which we've reviewed with you guys, all bridge has as well. So you're going to be seeing this more and more and more. Look at this. The total number of trust lines in the quarter decreased by over a million as a number of token projects lost traction during this challenging year. You guys see that. So in the past year, in this past quarter, XRPL projects plummeted in the sense that they lost a lot of traction over this past quarter with that said the number of unique token holders uh token wallets notably increased reflecting a growth in users on the xrpl so you guys see it that even though the token projects lost traction more and more users came to the xrpl the solo token the, the flagship token of sologenic was the most actively traded on chain this quarter excluding xrp so, yeah, guys, they're going to continue to build and build tokenization of carbon credits are going to be coming to the XRPL, which we've covered that a little bit with you guys. So I am I am so excited to see the future uh, with with ODL. Truly, they let me uh, talk to you guys about this. This is really important as well. On demand liquidity go live in Brazil. OK, uh, BRICS nations and APAC growth continues in Q3. Q3 was a strong quarter for ODL. As Ripple entered new markets and customers continue to leverage on-demand liquidity for use cases beyond individual payments, such as treasury and bulk payments. Now, if you are not familiar with what ODL is or on-demand liquidity, it's Ripple's mechanism, if you will, to supply, it's in the name, self-explanatory on-demand liquidity for um, Payment corridors, for instance, right now, when it comes down to uh, cross-border payments, usually there there's this thing called destination banking or destination accounts. You know what I mean? You actually have to have bank accounts across borders and whatnot. What ODL allows, it eliminates all that intermediate banking. It eliminates the middleman. You can have on-demand liquidity, instant clearing and settlement for remittances, for treasury payments, bulk payments, all of that. So of course, what's the solution to a liquidity crisis? On-demand liquidity. So notably, Ripple partnered with TravelX to launch ODL in Brazil, Brazil being a BRICS nation, initially allowing transactions between Brazil and Mexico. As you guys know, the remittance market is a trillion dollar industry. Brazil is a key market for Ripple, given it's important as an anchor to business in Latin America. Through its partnership, TravelX Bank can offer more affordable cross-border payments to their customers by eliminating the need for pre-funded destination accounts. That's what I was saying. While delivering near instant settlement, providing 24-7, 365 access to liquidity. You guys think that's small? You guys think that just ODL is just <clears throat> not going to have demand at all in the world? Come on. New and existing customers announced their use of uh, ODL for treasury flows, including FOMO Pay, Singapore-based Singapore institutional 
uh, payment solution, I remit one of the largest non bank remittance services in in the Philippines. So yeah, Ripple continues to grow and is a absolute juggernaut. But guys, I appreciate you making it to this part of the video. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out on any of our updates. But guys, I'll holler at you later. Peace. Mm -hmm.